What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing the linebackers set to hit free agency in 2023. And I think the linebackers are one of the more interesting positions this year in free agency because I think we have actually a lot of star power. But once you get beyond the first like eight or nine guys, I think it starts to really thin out. So I had to make a top 10 for this, but um, you know, the guys that did not make the top 10 are not that notable. So with that in mind, let's just get right into the top 10 here. Starting at number one, and I had a hard time trying to determine um, the order of this list because I think you have legitimately like eight, nine really great linebackers, like I just said. But at number one, I went with Jameer Thurman of the Calgary Stampeders. I mean, I don't think this would be a popular decision. I think most people would not have Thurman number one. But in my opinion, just from watching him play, just love the type of linebacker that he is. He has the versatility to play a weak side linebacker and the middle linebacker like we saw last season when they brought in Cameron Judge. And he's just a guy that can affect um, the passing game as well, uh, gets his hands in passing lanes, can rush the passer, just does everything that you want out of, a, out of an elite linebacker. And him and Cameron Judge made quite a tandem last year in Calgary. What a... Great addition that was bringing Judge in to pair with Thurman. But Thurman, just having that adaptability to play multiple positions, such a valuable thing for a linebacker in the CFL. And so, in terms of fits for Jameer Thurman going forward, I think going back to Calgary is probably the best bet for him. But I think a team like Saskatchewan um, would be very interested as well. I think um, there'll be other teams around the league that will come calling for him. Um, and uh, maybe he's not the first option for some teams like he is for me, but uh, I think that Jameer Thurman is just such a valuable player in today's CFL, and that's why I have him at number one. Now at number two, I have Winton McManus of the Toronto Argonauts. Before his injury this past season, um, I think with like three or four weeks to go, he would have been probably the defensive player of the year in the CFL. He was having a magnificent season with the Argos, a guy that just is a stat sheet stuffer, uh, just made a ton of big plays last year, sacks, interceptions, you name it. Very dynamic linebacker coming over from Calgary. And I think that um, in terms of fits for him, if he's not going to be staying in Toronto, I think Ottawa is a potential option for him. Uh, I think Ottawa will be looking to make a splash and really improve the upside of that defense, uh, particularly in that linebacking core. And I think McManus would definitely do the trick. But like I said with Thurman and a lot of guys on this list, there'll be a lot of options uh, for these players. Then at number three, I went with Darnell Sankey of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Now, many people will have Darnell Sankey at number one because Sankey just set the Saskatchewan Rough Riders record for most tackles in a season. And people that have watched my channel for a while know I'm not the biggest uh, tackles guy. I don't use that stat to uh, reference um, you know, some player that's playing good very often. But I think that um, in this case, anytime you break a single season tackle record, um, that is definitely noteworthy. And uh, Sankey has just been a tackling machine uh, the first couple of years of his CFL career, first with Calgary and then translating it to Saskatchewan last year. So he is going to be very sought after as that true middle linebacker in free agency. I mean, Thurman, like I said, could play both. Uh, middle linebacker and weak side linebacker. McMahon is more of a weak side linebacker so far in his career, but Sankey is that true middle linebacker that you just plug into the middle of the defense and expect six to eight tackles a game. So I'm very interested to see what he does going forward and if he switches teams again this offseason. I think that Edmonton is a team um, that will be linked to a lot of defensive free agents, especially that linebacking core. They could really use uh, just something to beef up that middle of that defense um, that really struggled last year against the run in particular. And Sankey is just a really great run defender for that. And then at number four, I went with Hainok Luamba of the Toronto Argonauts, the Grey Cup MVP from this past season. He's the only Canadian guy on the board here. Um, still one of the best middle linebackers in the CFL, just great closing speed. I always say that was his uh, most defining aspect as a player is his great closing speed and just his ability to go sideline to sideline, just um, an elite athlete at the linebacker position, especially for a national player. And he is one of the few uh, Canadian national linebackers that are really um, a difference maker in the CFL today. 
In terms of fits for Hainak Mwamba, I think he can go a number of different places. He's played a number of different places in his career. Uh, but I do think Toronto is still the most likely scenario for him to go back there. But he will demand top dollar as, um, like I said, a Canadian player at a position that doesn't have a ton of them. I think Ottawa, like I said with McManus, uh, Ottawa will be looking to probably make a splash at the linebacker position. I could look at a team like Montreal potentially to try to bring him in as well. He has a history there, one most outstanding Canadian there in 2019. Um, maybe Saskatchewan if he's willing to go out west. Um, just going to be a lot of interest in Hainak Mwamba, and that's why he's at uh, number four on the list. And then moving on to number five is where you really start to show that there's so much depth in this linebacking core because these guys really in a normal year should rank higher. And at number five, I have Javon Santos Knox of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, a true middle linebacker that had his breakout season this past year. I thought he was arguably the Tiger Cats' best player on that side of the ball. Um, after like a period of time that I just really criticized his uh, play, mostly just how he was in pass coverage as a middle linebacker. Not many middle linebackers are very um, um, elite at uh, pass coverage, uh, but I did think Javon Santos Knox was particularly lacking in that regard prior to last season. But last season, he really just put all of his strengths to the test and really shirred up some of those weaknesses. I thought that um, he was much more noticeable in getting his hands in passing lanes and um, using that, like, um, his best asset, in my opinion, is rushing the passer on the blitz. Knox is probably one of the bigger linebackers in the league, and he really uses that to his advantage. And I think that he really put it all together last season. I think that Montreal would be an option for him. If he does leave Hamilton, I think Hamilton will be very interested in bringing him back. Like I said, arguably the defensive MVP last year for them. Um, but I think that, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's going to come down to, I think, um, you know, money and uh, what teams prioritize in terms of uh, the position. I think sometimes teams don't value linebackers as much as they do other positions, which is why Hamilton may um, not decide to move on, which is important to keep in mind when we talk about this next guy, Simone Lawrence of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Lawrence, obviously, basically a lifelong Tiger Cat, but it's really getting cloudy in terms of uh, his future for next year, has not re-upped with the Tiger Cats yet. Don't know if he would be interested in going somewhere else in free agency, uh, but at the end of the day, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with these two linebackers. Um, and if they keep one or the other, they're able to keep both of them. Um, but I think both of them are going to get a good amount of money, um, regardless of where they decide to play next season. I think if Simone Lawrence, on the off chance that he decides to um, change teams this offseason, I would look out for the Argos. As sad as it would be to see him play for the Argos, uh, we've seen this over the years. You saw it with Brandon Banks, um, you know, and the same thing happens with Winnipeg and Saskatchewan. Hamilton, Toronto, they uh, like to steal free agents off each other all the time and just give themselves a little bit of edge on that rivalry, get a little bit more intel on the opponent. I think Simone Lawrence uh, could potentially be a fit there if they lose Winton McManus in Toronto. So I think look out for that. And I think that's one thing to consider with these linebackers this year is, um, you know, determining where these guys go. If these top guys go somewhere, um, that determines where the available spots are still the rest of the league. Keep in mind, nine-team league, there's only so many spots to fill. So um, it'll be interesting to see where Simone Lawrence goes this offseason. And then going on to number seven, another former Tiger Cat that played in Saskatchewan last season really reestablished himself as one of the better linebackers in the league, and that is Larry Dean of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And Larry Dean, just so happy that he was able to get back on the field last season after uh, suffering an Achilles injury in 2021. Um, just, I love what he's been able to bring to the table. He, too, like uh, Jameer Thurman, did a position change this past season being a, a middle linebacker previously and then moving out to the weak side linebacker. So I think that was an incredibly impressive performance uh, playing alongside Darnell Sankey in Saskatchewan. Don't know what's happening in Saskatchewan. Don't know, um, you know, how many of these guys that they have as free agents they're going to bring back. Uh, so don't know if he'll be back in Saskatchewan. I put Hamilton as a potential destination if they lose 
uh, Santos Knox or Simone Lawrence. I think that could be definitely a fit because of his history in Hamilton. But Edmonton, I think, like I said, they're going to be hooked to a lot of or linked to a lot of um, pending defensive free agents. So it should be interesting to see where Larry Dean goes this offseason. Dean might be one of these guys that is dependent on where these other top guys go, but we'll have to see where he ends up. And then going on to number eight, we have Avery Williams of the Ottawa Red Blacks. Um, just a guy I would describe as a tackling machine that's uh, that pure middle linebacker. I don't think he brings a ton of upside in terms of, uh, you know, um, getting a ton of sacks or, um, you know, influencing pass coverage that much. But I do think he is a very good uh, starter in the middle of your defense. And um, I think he would be a fit. Uh, a lot of different places, uh, depending on who has a need as we go into free agency here. In terms of fits for Avery Williams, I think Saskatchewan could be a fit if they lose Darnell Sankey, um, which, like I said, is a quite a big possibility. Um, but I think that will be an interesting uh, player to watch this offseason, Avery Williams of the Ottawa Red Blacks. And then moving on to numbers 9 and 10 here, I think we have a significant drop-off from the top 8, which are in my opinion, those are really those um, difference-making starting linebackers. Um, but at 9 and 10, I think these are just solid players here. Uh, starting with Micah Allway of the Ottawa Red Blacks. Um, uh, my mistake with the Montreal Alouettes. I forgot what team he played for for a second because uh, in 2021, played for Ottawa. At the beginning of this season, he played for BC. And then he... Um, he played for Montreal midway through this season because uh, of his release from BC. Um, but he struggled to find the field last year, mostly because of ratio situation. I think um, usually teams don't dress too many backup American linebackers, and he was having a hard time really finding a starting role uh, somewhere on the on a team last year. So it'll be interesting to see if that's again the case for him this season. But I thought he played really well in 2021 with Ottawa, so we'll see if he finds a role with the team uh, next season. I didn't even put a destination for these last two guys because I think it's totally dependent on what happens with the rest of these um, guys that are going to hit the market this offseason. And then at number 10, I have Dion Lacey of the Edmonton Elks, and um, I thought he was had a really struggling season last year. He had uh, times where he wasn't dressed in the lineup, um, Edmonton doing a lot with their uh, lineups and changing players in and out every week. So maybe he was just uh, a victim of that, but um, it was kind of concerning that he wasn't able to consistently stay on the field for them. But a guy that can contribute on special teams and be a very good base level linebacker at his worst. Um, but I think that maybe his best years are behind him in the CFL, but I think he's a noteworthy player. Uh, to uh, put on the board nonetheless and um, he could be an interesting addition for some team this year now in terms of the guys that did not make the top 10 here there's just not a ton out there but uh, we'll run through the names here so we have uh, Kirshan Beria of the Montreal Alouettes started a handful of games with Edmonton in 2021 but um it just hasn't really made too much of an impact otherwise. Shahid Solomon uh, played with Ottawa the past couple of years. Just not a really noteworthy player in my opinion. Um, Curtis Newton, a special teamer for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, a Canadian, um, just hasn't really gotten the opportunity to start at linebacker. Les Moreau, a global for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, um, just a good story from Japan. Um, I think he's done a really good job at just getting some rotational reps here or there. Hasn't really got the opportunity to start. Um, maybe he becomes a global that you know, uh, breaks into the starting lineup here in the next couple of years, but uh, we'll have to wait and see with him. Nigel Harris of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, believe he's mostly just a special teams guy. You have the Herdman Reed brothers, Justin and Jordan for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, um, have gotten playing time in the past with uh, teams like BC and Toronto, but um, overall, I think both of those guys uh, just um, not really star caliber uh, players, not really that ratio breaking, uh, so to speak, uh, Canadian players in the league. Gary Johnson of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, um, just another run-of-the-mill linebacker that's just hung around the past couple of years. Fraser Sopic of the Calgary Stampeders, a Canadian guy from uh, Western. Um, I think he's shown a lot of great ability on special teams and has um, shown some ability as uh, a guy that is placed on the field in blitz packages. I think that 
you know, he's probably going to go back to Calgary. I think he likes the fit that he has there, but maybe he's a, a good depth addition for some team out there. And then Jordan Reeves of the Edmonton Elks, another backup um, linebacker traditionally that just hasn't really uh, done a whole lot. And then finally, Kevin Francis, uh, a veteran Canadian special teams uh, player, but just never has really been a starting linebacker in the league. But with that said, those are just the linebackers set to hit free agency this offseason. Be sure to let me know what you think down in the comment section. Who's changing teams? Who's staying put? Let me know. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.